Hi everyone, in this video we're going to integrate the square root of x over a minus x, where a is a constant. And I just want to mention that the main reason I'm doing this is that I'm planning to use this integral for a particular physical application in an upcoming video. But for now, let's just focus on evaluating this thing. Now the way we're going to do this uh, is with a substitution, and what's going to be helpful is to let x be defined as a times sine squared of theta, where theta is uh, some other variable. Now the reason why that helps will become a bit clearer if you think about what happens to the denominator of our integrand, which was a minus x. So if we take that expression a minus x and make the substitution, um, you can factor out an a and write it as a brackets 1 minus sine squared theta. But then you can use a trig identity to say that that's just a times cos squared of theta. All right, so doing this substitution simplifies that denominator a little bit. And of course, you've also got to um, write dx in terms of d theta if you want to do a substitution. So we can do that by differentiating our definition of x in terms of theta. We find that dx is uh, 2a sine theta, and then you get a factor of cos theta from the chain rule, and then a d theta. All right, so now we're in a position where we can just do all those substitutions and see what happens. Right, So our integral is uh, the integral of the square root of a sine squared theta because the top was just x, and the bottom, we found that was a cos squared theta, right? So we get a cos squared theta on the bottom, and our dx turns into a 2a sine theta cos theta d theta. We can make some simplifications, right? These a's cancel in the first bit, and the square root um, makes the squares disappear, basically, and so we end up with the integral of sine theta over cos theta, times 2a sine theta cos theta d theta. Uh, then there's a cos theta on the bottom and a cos theta on the top, so they cancel. And I'm just going to take out a, a constant factor of a, and we're left with a times the integral of 2 sine squared theta um, d theta. Now, there is a reason I've left the 2 inside the integrand. That's because there's a trig identity that says cos of 2 theta is 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. We can use that identity to actually do this integral, right? So 2 sine squared theta is just 1 minus cos of 2 theta. So our integral becomes a times the integral of 1 minus cos of 2 theta with respect to theta. Um, and then you can just directly integrate this term by term, right? So you've got your a prefactor of a. The 1 just integrates to theta. Cos of 2 theta integrates to a half sine of 2 theta. So we get this factor of a half um, by sort of applying the chain rule in reverse. And the cos becomes a sine. And then you've got your constant of integration, which I'm going to call c. So now all we have to do um, is write this in terms of x instead of in terms of theta. So we're going to have to go back to our original definition of x in terms of theta and invert that relationship. Um, doing that, we find that theta is the arc sine of the square root of x over a. Okay, so that takes care of the first term. Um, what about this half sine 2 theta? Well, here's where we're going to have to use yet another trig identity. So we know from our double angle formulae that half sine of 2 theta is sine theta times cos theta. All right, um, sine theta we can get an expression for from a definition of x in terms of theta because sine theta is just the square root of x over a. And then with this cos theta term, we can use the fact that cos squared plus sine squared is 1, and therefore cos theta is the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta. So we get the square root of 1 minus um, x over a, and this x over a again just followed from our definition up there, sine squared theta is x over a. Okay, so if we just um, rewrite that in a slightly nicer way, um, I'll keep the first square root as it is for now, so square root of x over a. If we write the second square root um, as like a single fraction, then we end up with a minus x over a there. Uh, now, there's an a on both of these denominators, and so you can pull out a factor of 1 over a like that and just have a single square root where you've got um, x brackets a minus x in there. Okay, so that's uh, half sine of 2 theta in terms of x, that expression over there. And so we're nearly done. Um, we can now conclude uh, that therefore our integral i 
is, well, the first term was a theta, which is a times arc sine of the square root of x over a. Now, the second term um, was minus a half sine of 2 theta, but there is also this prefactor of a. That prefactor of a cancels with this 1 over a that we found down there, right? And so your second term is just minus the square root of x um, times a minus x, and then you've got your constant of integration plus c.